Hi everyone, this is Will with KL Aviation, and in this lesson we're going to look at how to fly a DME arc. Now DME arcs are one of those things that are very confusing and kind of scary to new instrument pilots, because not only do you have to maintain a course and a heading and an altitude, but you have to do it all while maintaining the same distance around a VOR. In reality, DME arcs aren't that bad, and once you gain a little bit of situational awareness as to where you are on the arc, they're really quite easy to fly. Now, DME arc is simply just a way to do a course reversal that's not a procedure turn. So in this case, we would intercept the arc here at this initial approach fix of exode, or possibly down here at Gussy, or maybe even over here. We would then fly the arc all the way around to the final approach course and proceed inbound. Now basically what this is is just a different way of doing it instead of flying to Jivdo here and flying outbound on the procedure turn back in to the airport. In some areas it's not even possible to find a fix to where you can just fly a normal procedure turn. The only way to get to the final approach course is by an arc. Okay, so now that we know what an arc is, let's look at how to fly one. Now an arc is just a ring around a specified nav aid, in this case the PASCO VOR, at a specified distance. On this arc, it's 14 DME. So to intercept the arc, we're either going to be tracking inbound towards the VOR or outbound away from the VOR. Now in this example, let's say that we're tracking to the VOR and we just happen to be on this 301 radial outbound, which puts us on the 121 degree radial inbound. So as we fly down this radial, we're going to keep a close eye on the DME. It's going to tick down from 17 to 16 to 15. And the number we're really looking for is 14.5. A half mile intercept is a good rule of thumb for any aircraft that's traveling less than about 150 knots. If you're traveling more than 150 knots, you're going to need a little bit more lead time. But if you're traveling 90 or 100 knots, a half mile is going to be just fine. So now, when we see this 14.5, we're going to start an immediate left turn 90 degrees so that now we're perpendicular to our original course. Whereas we were heading 121 to get towards the VOR, now we've turned 90 degrees to the left, and our new heading at this point is going to be 031 degrees. Now, the next step is to center up the CDI needle on your VOR indicator. What that's going to do is it's going to give you the new radial that you are on from the VOR. So in this case, after we make this 90 degree turn, we've probably drifted a few degrees, so we're no longer on the 301, we're probably on, let's just say, the 303 degree radial. So what that means is now we're no longer 90 degrees to the course to the VOR. So if we just kept flying this way, we'd just fly outbound away from the arc, and we'd never be able to re-intercept it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that 303 centered up. We're going to look over here to this right side of the instrument. And we're going to see, in this case now, it's going to say probably 033. OK, I've drawn this just a little bit backwards. If the VOR is to your right, as in this instance, you'll look to the left. And if the VOR is on your left, you'll look to the right side of the instrument. OK. So now we see 033. And this is going to be our reference heading. And that's just what it is. It's a reference. So if we fly 033, we should again be perpendicular 
to what radial we were on, and we'll be maintaining pretty close to within the arc distance. Now what's going to happen? That CDI needle is going to start coming off to the side. Once it hits about 4 degrees or so, we're going to recenter it back up and find the new reference heading. In this case, it would be now the 037 if we moved 4 degrees. Return to that 037 and fly till we're again 4 degrees or so off on the CDI. Recenter the CDI, look off to the right, find our new reference heading, and fly that track. So really what we're doing is flying a series of short straight legs to fly the arc. One thing to note is it's much easier to fly inside of the arc than outside of the arc. If you're flying inside the arc, you're always flying to the arc. If you're flying outside the arc, it's much harder for you to turn back and re-intercept the arc distance. So if you can stay 0.2 miles, 0.1 miles inside the arc, it's generally a better practice than allowing yourself to drift outside of the arc. Okay, now let's take a quick look at intercepting the arc from the inside. We're going to use the same example, but now we've flown to the VOR and we're tracking outbound on the 301. Now the magic number we're looking for is 13.5, which is a half mile inside. Once we hit that 13.5, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make a, that immediate 90 degree turn, in this case a right turn. So now we're perpendicular to the VOR, and we're in the same spot as we were before. Actually flying the arc is exactly the same whether you intercepted it from the inside or the outside. It's just a difference in which direction you turn and what DME you're looking for. In this case, we have the CDI needle centered up, we could see that if we were flying the arc, our reference heading would be 090. As we've said before, the needle's going to drift off because we are flying perpendicular to that radial, so it's going to drift fairly quickly. Not so fast that you have to stare solely at the VOR indicator, but it's going to happen fast enough that you're going to have to keep on top of it. So once you see that, four degree deflection or so. Twist the OBS knob. Center back up the needle. And now we'll look back over at a reference heading. Let's just say it was five degrees off. And in this case, we'll just make the assumption that to center it back up, we ended up at 085. That's the new reference heading. That's what we're gonna fly till we get some more deviation. Keep in mind all of this is for a no-wind scenario as well. If there's wind, you're going to have to make some sort of adjustment to make sure that you don't get blown either inside or outside of the arc. Now situational awareness is key when flying an arc, mainly because at some point you're going to have to turn inbound on the approach. I've done it, many other people have done it, where you aren't paying attention and you end up somewhere over here. So how do we fight that? Well, on some approaches, like the one we were looking at before, there's actually a lead radial that'll be depicted, which is a point when you want to start retuning in for the final approach course and intercept the final approach course. However, there are a lot of approaches like this one that don't have a lead radial. You just have to know where you are. In most of these cases, too, you're going to intercept somewhere out here. So you're going to have quite a ways that you're going to be flying before you finally get to this final approach course. Now if you do the same sort of technique as we've been doing to keep this arc, you should be okay. Let's use 2 to 4 degrees as our lead radial. So we're going to start to turn inbound once we get to about the 250 to 252. We're going to turn inbound, reset up our navigational radios for the approach, and fly inbound. Another tool you can use to keep situational awareness is to know what these radials are for every fix so that you know mentally that once you pass a 0 to 9 radial, 
That's the last fix depicted before you have to turn inbound. You know that when you pass the 360 radial, you're right here. And maybe set up a reference for yourself so that you know that after this fix here of Zooted, you're looking for the uh, 250. Just make it a round even number and start your turn. Even if this final approach course was a 253 or something, you could use 250 or make it a 255 if it was a 257. Just pick something easy to remember. Use it as a reference in your head. Write it down on your kneeboard. That way, as you're flying the arc, you can look down and you know where you are and you don't overshoot that final approach course. Also note that arcs can have changing altitudes. In this arc, if you intercept it at HECP, you have to fly at 5,900 feet until you reach a Yuya where you can descend to 5,600 feet. So just remember, when you're flying a DME arc, to intercept, you make a 90 degree turn to join the arc. Recenter your CDI needle. Look off to either the left or right side, depending on where the VOR is, to find your reference heading. Turn to that heading, which is where you should be just about already. Wait for another small deflection on the CDI needle. Center it back up. Look back off to one side or the other for your reference and fly that heading. Keep an eye on that DME just to make sure you're not drifting inside or outside of the arc too much, and you should be well on your way. I hope you learned something about DME arcs in this lesson, and I look forward to seeing you again in another KL Aviation lesson.